Hi, and welcome to this special 1,000 subscribers bonus video, um, which I am tacking on to the end of this Python programming course. And in this video, we are going to learn how to make a quiz game. You are going to learn to combine user input, selection, iteration uh, together. You're going to learn how to structure a more complex program using subroutines and how to use two-dimensional lists, which means lists inside lists, to store quiz questions and answers. So let's look at what we're actually going to be doing today. You are going to be making a true or false quiz game. Uh, so that's a quiz where people might say, true or false, tigers have stripes, and the user will enter true or false at the keyboard. We're going to use loops to show each of our statements to the player, and then you're going to use selection, remember that's if or else, to test whether that user input um, is correct. And we'll keep uh, track of their score using a variable so that we can know how many questions they have answered correctly. Now this is our quiz game structure. As you can see at the top, um, the whole quiz game can be broken down into a few elements. We're going to have a main menu screen, we're going to have a play true or false quiz, and if you choose to take on the show what you know uh, part of this video, then you'll also be adding a general knowledge quiz. But let's just look now in more detail at the the uh, true or false quiz. So that part of the game is going to be made up of a few different functions or subroutines and each of those will be responsible for a different part of playing the true or false quiz. So with this in mind we can now get started making our game. Start up a new Python uh, REPL if you're using REPLit or just a Python program if you're using another editor and let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set up a subroutine to play the true or false game and I'm going to use something called comments which is lines of text that we add into our program and I'm going to use them as placeholders for each of the different parts of the program that we need to make. So I'll start off by defining a new subroutine and I'm going to call it play tof true or false quiz and inside that I'm going to write these comments. Now comments start with a hashtag symbol and from there, you can then write what you um, all the different things that need to happen. So if we think about our structure chart, the first thing we needed to do was get true or false statements. So I know that I'm going to need to write some code to do that. The next thing I'm going to want to do is randomize um, the true or false, I'm going to call them TOF statements. We're then going to need to set up a loop to show each of the true or false statements. So let's say show TOF statements using a loop. Now within that loop we have to do um, some specific things. So let's just use indentation to show it's inside the loop. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is um, present the, loop, the statement on the screen. So present statement. Then we're going to want the user to enter their guess. Enter guess. Then we're going to want to check if the guess is correct. And then we're going to want to update their score if it is. So let's indent another comment. Um, so if we're going to update a score, we probably have to set a score. So why don't we put that in up here? Um, at the beginning. Now once that loop has finished, we're then going to want to show the final score and that's going to be the main structure of playing the quiz. So those are the various steps that we're going to have to go through and by writing those comments in I've kind of designed the outline of my program which is a really useful first step. It almost becomes like a checklist now and as I write my more complex program I can just do one of these at a time. So for your first task, I want you to do just like what I have done. I want you to create your own play true or false quiz subroutine that contains placeholder comments for each of the different routines and steps that we will need to cover for our game to work. So now that we've got our placeholders in place, let's begin with the first one, get true or false statements. So for this to work, I'm actually going to create a new subroutine before that one. It's always helpful to create a subroutine um, before you actually are going to use it. So I'm going to create a new subroutine called get tof statements. And in this subroutine, I'm going to need a list of these statements. So I'm going to call it maybe statements. And I'm going to just create that as an empty list. So I've created a variable called statements. 
and I'm making it equal to, or I'm assigning it, an empty list using the square brackets with nothing in it. And now I just need to append to this list, if you remember from our last video, I'm going to append each of the true or false statements that are going to feature in my quiz. So to do that, I can do statements dot append, open brackets, and inside the brackets, I'm going to put a new list, so square brackets again, and the first thing in this list is going to be the statement, and the second thing is going to be whether it's true or false. So let's do that. Let's put the first thing in as a string, tigers have stripes. That's my statement. And then within that list, I'm going to put a comma, and now I'm going to have another element in this list is going to be whether that is true or false. So again, in quotes, I'm just going to put a capital T because that is true. Let's add some more statements for the quiz. So I've added a couple of statements here, and um, as you can see, for each one, I've got the statement and whether it's true. And so once I've generated all of those statements, I need to return them. So to do that, I just use the return keyword and then the variable that stores all of my statements. So now that I've got my get true or false statements routine, I can actually use it in my play true or false quiz. So here I'm going to call that subroutine. But again, because this subroutine returns um, a value, it returns a list of statements, I actually need to have a variable to store them. So I can just say tof statements is equal to or is assigned the value returned by get true or false statements. So it's time for task two and I want you to create your own get true or false statement subroutine that returns a list of true or false statements and an indicator of whether each one is true or false. You will then need to add code to your play true or false quiz routine to call or run the get true or false statements subroutine and save the list of true or false statements to a variable. So back inside my play true or false quiz routine, I've now achieved the first uh, goal. Uh, but the next thing is we're going to randomize those true or false statements. Now, to do that, we can use a built-in function from Python that randomizes or shuffles uh, lists. Now, for that, we need to import the random library, which, if you remember from our last video, is full of lots of subroutines and functions that allow us to do different things involving randomizing things in programs. So we're going to import random, and I can now use random dot shuffle, it's a special routine, and it shuffles lists. So I just need to pass it a variable that stores a list and it will shuffle or reorder all of the items in that list. Well, TOF statements is a list, um, so that's the one I'm going to pass through. So I'm going to say TOF statements. So let me just talk you through what we're doing here. Remember, TOF statements is a variable assigned the value returned from this subroutine get tof statements get tof statements generates our true or false statements and their answers and it returns it they come back here and get saved here we're then passing that list of statements into the shuffle routine which is going to randomize their order so very quickly then, you are on to task three, where I want you just to add that little bit of code to your play TOF quiz routine to randomize the order of statements in your true or false statements list. Remember, you're going to need to write import random at the start of your program. Now let's move on to task four. I thought for a change, I might actually show you what the task is before I show you how to do it. This is because you might be at that stage now where you feel confident that you know how to do this and you just want to get started on it um, on your own. In which case, let's talk about what you need to do and you can go ahead and try it. But if you're not so confident, then don't worry, stick around. I'm going to show you how to achieve everything on this list. So for task four, to run the quiz, we need to add a variable called player score, set that to zero, and that's going to happen near the start of the play true or false quiz routine. You then need to add some code to the true or false quiz routine that uses a for loop to show each of the true or false statements to your user. 
asks the user to enter a guess. We might need to prompt them to enter just T or F, and we need to save that. Check if that user's entry is correct, and if it is, add one to the player's score. So like I say, if you think you know how to do this and you want to try it your own way, then go ahead now. But if you're not sure, let's do this together. So we're back in our play true or false quiz routine. And because we've got our placeholders in, in place, it should be fairly easy to complete the rest of our quiz. The first thing we need to do is set a player score to zero. Um, so we just need a variable that's going to store their score. So that could easily just be score equals zero. Job done. Now we want to move on to using a loop to show each of our true or false statements. So for this we're going to use a for loop. And if you remember the format for a for loop, what we do is we say for and then a variable in and then it's either a range if it's going to be numbers or um, the name of a list that contains each element. So we could say for s because that's like a statement for s in true or false statements. So this is now a for loop that's going to go through every single statement in our true or false statements list. For each one, it's going to take one of those statements and it's going to assign it to a variable s. So I can now print out those statements by referring just to s. So let's have a look. Present the statement, so print now what I might do is I might say true or false and then a colon and then I'm going to add the actual text of the statement being stored in variable s. So I'll start with s but if you remember each element in true or false statements is itself a list with two elements. It has the statement and whether it's true or false. So I actually need to go inside this list and take just the statement or just the first item in the list. And if you remember correctly, accessing a list means we have to state the name of the list, then square brackets, and we have to give the index number for the item we want. And the first item in the list is always index zero. So this will now say true or false, and it will give me the statement text itself. Let's just check this actually runs because it's the first time we've now got something on our program where we have an output. So right at the very end of my program I'm going to make all this work by running my play true or false quiz routine. So to do that I need to enter play true or false quiz. So if I run this it should now print each of the three true or false statements in a random order. Let's try it. Here we go. True or false, the capital of France is Madrid. True or false, the queen owns one-sixth of the land on the earth. True or false, tigers have stripes. So that's working, and that's good. I just wanted to test this before we go any further. So now we are presenting um, a true or false statement to the user, and we need to get their input and see if it's correct or not. So to do that, we're going to need to take their guess. So let's say guess is equal to input, and we can say enter T or F, okay? And now we're going to want to check if what they've entered is correct. So we can say if guess, which is what they've typed in, is equal equals, so equal to. And now for any given statement S, we need to access that second element in the list because that is where we've got whether it's true or false. So to do that, I'm going to say if their guess is equal to, within my statement, the second element, which if you remember is index 1. If that's true, I can then print something like correct and we're going to update their score. So for that, I'm going to say the score is equal to their current score plus one. Let's just say if they get it wrong though, let's just do else and print incorrect. Maybe an unhappy face. So that's going to run through. Let's just check if this works. So let's run again. Uh, tigers have stripes, true or false, so I'll enter T. Correct. True or false, the queen owns one fifth of the land on earth. Let's just get this one wrong. Let's put false. And it says incorrect. True or false, capital of France is Madrid. 
let's get this correct. So let's say it's false. And it tells me that that's correct. So back to task four, if you haven't already gone ahead to do this yourself, then you need to go ahead and do what I've just done, creating a, a new variable within your play true or false quiz routine called player score, set that to zero, or just score like mine, set it to zero, and then add the code that uses the for loop to show each of the statements, to get the user's guess, to check if the guess is correct, and to add one to the player score if it is correct. The final thing I need to do now is to show the player their final score. So for that, all I need to do is say something like print your final score is, and I'm going to add um, str score. Remember, we have to cast a number because this is going to be an integer. If I want to join it onto my string, I have to cast it to a string using str first. Let's try this. Run. The capital of France is Madrid, false. Uh, the queen owns one sixth of land on earth, true. Tigers have stripes, true. Your final score is three. So let's look again at our quiz game structure. We've now got our true or false game, uh, the true or false quiz part of our game done. That's all finished. Um, in a bit, you're going to, if you want to, you are going to go and try and make your own general knowledge quiz. Uh, but before that, we're going to just make this main menu, which we can show when the game begins. So let's go back into our Python program, and we're going to create a new subroutine called main menu. So I'm going to do this um, towards the end of my program. So I'm just going to say def main menu. And inside here, I'm going to use print statements to show a sort of title screen. Now, you can use a combination of uh, different symbols to make like a border which can look quite effective so I'm going to do that as well and now I'm going to continue to add print statements to show each of the different menu options that I want my user to be able to choose from so if we want to test how this looks um, we need to just change this line of code at the very end of our program which runs our true or false quiz change it so that it runs our main menu instead press the run button and we can see what this looks like so there's my main menu screen. Now at the moment it doesn't do anything because it doesn't actually let the user type anything in. So let's add that to our main menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is use input to get uh, the user's choice. So I have a variable called choice equals input, enter 1, 2 or 0. And now I just need to use if statements to find out what they've typed in. And if it's 1, play the true or false quiz. If it's two, for now I'm not really going to do anything because I don't have a general knowledge quiz, but this is where I'd add the code in. And if it's zero, then we're going to quit. So I'll say if choice is equal to one. Now I'm putting one in quotes here because remember that input always returns a string. So if they have entered one, that means we want to play our true or false quiz. So I need to now run the play true or false quiz subroutine. So I'm going to say if choice is one then play tof quiz. Now I can do elif choice is equal to zero so remember that's else if the choice is zero then I'm going to this is they've decided to quit so I'll just say print uh, thanks for playing and then I can use the quit subroutine, which is built into Python, and that will end the program. When you come to adding your own general knowledge quiz, if you want to do that, you'll need to add another elif choice equals, oh, that should be in quotes, choice equals two, and then it's going to have to run your subroutine for your general knowledge quiz. So let's rerun this and see what happens now. So I can enter one, two, or zero. So if I enter zero, it should just say, thanks for playing, and it quits. I run it again and I want to play my true or false quiz, I press 1 and it starts my true or false quiz. So for your last task, you are going to create a main menu um, and for that you need to add a main menu subroutine that shows a title and menu to the player. Players should then be able to choose to either play your quiz or quit by entering a number from the menu. Uh, remember you need to change the code at the very end of the whole program so that your main menu is called when the program runs rather than the play true or false quiz routine. And for our final show what you know task, 
um, I want you to try and add a new type of quiz to your game, a general knowledge quiz that presents questions, for example, what is the capital of Spain, and allows the user to type in any answer. So your quiz should test if the player's answers are correct and update their score accordingly. And just as with the true or false quiz, you're going to need to use a list to store each question along with its correct answer. When you've got that working in its own little subroutine, um, you might need a few different subroutines for this, then I want you to update your main menu so that users can choose to play either the true or false quiz or your general knowledge quiz.